coming up, an interview with a musical genius, one of the world's greatest living guitarists, and the most spiritual interview I've ever done. I still reflect on it all the time. Uh, this guy's so timeless, he had his biggest hit after he got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was actually the second biggest hit in Billboard chart history, and the only song to be in a top year-end chart for two straight years. It was in the top 20 both years. Uh, no one's ever done that. Get the story coming up next from the legend. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you still cherish uh, the memory of the very first album that you bought with your own money, you're going to dig this channel. Make sure to subscribe below right now and click the bell so you never miss an episode. We're always interviewing the legends about their songs. You never know who's going to turn up on here. You'll definitely want to subscribe. Also, check us out on Patreon. So it's time for another edition of our show, Revelations, where featured artists share rare stories behind their greatest songs and their greatest albums. Insight you will not find anywhere else, and that's a fact. Uh, today, we have a very spiritual sit-down with a musical genius, the guitar guru himself, Carlos Santana. Uh, Carlos tells us the stories of his biggest hits, including the 70s classic rocker, Black Magic Woman, Now, Black Magic Woman was written by Peter Green for Fleetwood Mac, of course. You got to spell on me, baby. But you know, when Carlos Santana got a hold of it with Greg Raleigh on vocals, uh, he made it all his own. It belongs to Carlos for sure. Cut me so blind, I can see. And when it became one of the biggest rock songs ever, um, as he's going to share, Carlos started to send money the late blues legend Otis Rush every year because he felt that uh, Peter Green and the song had been seriously influenced by Otis Rush's song, All Your Love, even though he wasn't obligated to do so. He also shares the story behind his massive comeback that spawned his first hit in years. It actually became one of the biggest songs of the last 25 years, and he did this after he'd been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And like I said, it uh, was the, one of the only songs in history to be in two year-end countdowns. It made number 19 for 1999, and it was number two for 2000. Just amazing. Let's get into this amazing interview. Now, as we go into it, I do want to thank our sponsor, Bub's Naturals. So I've been raving about the benefits of Bub's Naturals collagen protein and MC2 oil for months now. Now, I have more good news from Bub's. They conducted a massive survey to their devoted customers about what kind of new product they should offer. And the overwhelming majority wanted a natural coffee blend curated by Bub's Naturals. So the Bubs team have meticulously chosen the highest quality, specially green coffee beans from Central America to be shipped to California. Then they test every single batch for mold, yeast, and aflatoxins. Once each lot of coffee beans passes the test, they're roasted to perfection to create Bubs Brew, the original blend. Bubs Brew is created to be the ultimate highest quality natural coffee available. USDA, organic, fair trade, and the first ever coffee bean to be Whole30 approved. It's another great product from Bubs Naturals, the brand committed to helping us live a fuller, healthier life. Just click on the link in the description below and use the Professor of Rock promo code to get a 20% dedicated on all Bubs Naturals product. Let me ask you about uh, one of your greatest albums, Abraxas. It was named number 205 on Rolling Stones, 500 greatest albums of all time. It's such a great mix of blues, jazz, salsa, and rock. Tell me about making that album, especially like Black Magic Woman. You know, it was so much fun, man, because we're in the studio feeling more confident. Now we're playing in Woodstock, and Bill Graham opened the door, and, and, and uh, the first album is, you know, it's, it's making a mark. So we go into the studio, Wally Hyders, to record Abraxas. And in the middle of this, 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 this recording, man, the phone rings. And uh, somebody says, hey, Carlos, this is for you, man. I says, me? 
you know, because nobody calls me, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? By that time, I already split from home, so it was a little strained with that situation. And so, you know, it's for you. I said, well, who is it? And they go, Miles Davis. And I'm like, man, don't fool around like that. <laughs> no, it's Miles Davis. So I go pick up the one. Hey, how you doing? I was like, ugh. Oh. <laughs> he goes, what are you doing? I says, well, we're recording this album, you know, uh, the next album. And, uh, you know, all I can remember in that album was that there was such a beautiful um, energy. Energy of us loving Peter Green and Gabor Sawa and Tito Puente. Got a black magic woman, just got me so blind. Peter Green collects royalties, but it's our black magic woman now. You know, because to me, black magic woman came from all your love, pretty baby. Having stuff for you. Da, 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 da. Got a black. You know, to me, it's the same thing. Just you just yeah. change the lyrics, you know. So, you know, so so Santana, like I said, is a commonality of gumbo of a lot of people, you know. At least two to three times a year, I send some serious money to Otis Rush. I, I have to, and I will continue to That's amazing. To, to, to honor the, the song that I play every night. Well, what about Everybody's Everything? Because that's a song that you co-wrote, and of course, Neil Sean played the solo, and then the Tower of Power horns. There, there, there's, a, there's still a, a store called Village Records in Mill Valley, and I always took Eric Clapton there when he came to town. And this, this kid has an incredible amount of records. And uh, I found a song in there co called Karate by the Emperors. Get, you know, dun, 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 yeah. Karate. Hey. Karate, no, no, let's go into um, the lyrics of like sing. Everybody's waiting for a new day to come around with all the beating up b hippies and the Vietnam and the shooting the Black Panthers, you know. I'm still, I'm still creating songs about shaking the world's foundation and, and conquering fear forever. That's like my mission, along with Bob Marley and and John Lennon, you know, our, our mission is to utilize music to... to Change the world. To change the arrangements of people's mentality uh, because people's mentality are really, really twisted and crooked. And everything that we, we were taught, even in Catholic school, is upside down. So, you know, everybody's everything is, is the beginning of, of me and Carlos Santana, you know, convincing the rest of the band, like, look, man, we're going to talk about something different than hot cars and hot chicks and <laughs> this and that, man. We're going to talk about, you know, the same thing that I love about Marvin Gaye and, 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 and John Lennon. Let's, let's go this way and let's not apologize for it. Come on, people now. You know, everybody can come, you know. All Together. those things are still very supremely vibrant to me right now, you know, more than ever. Uh, and, and I think that everybody's everything is, uh, and when I got a hold of the emperors, they, they, did, they didn't have no qualms. They said, yeah, we like the lyrics, man. Go ahead, Santana, you know, as long as they got, you know, the, the, the royalties. Mm -hmm. So we, we split it like that. And it was very sentient. It was very, very noble. And it was very clean with integrity, you know. Absolutely. So Great song. That's, that's what that is. You had such a huge resurgence in 1999, 2000, with Supernatural. Such an incredible album, especially the first song, Smooth, comes out with Rob Thomas. You probably know this, but it was number two on the, the 50th year anniversary that Billboard did. They named the 100 greatest songs of all time on the chart. You were number two to The Twist, Chubby Checkers' The <laughs> Twist. You spent 12 weeks at number one. Tell me about recording that album. You know, that album, it, it is what it's called, Supernatural, and that means it's outside of the realm of possibilities. When I say to you, straight up, 
only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, because you got to put this in perspective. You know, Neil, uh, uh, Greg Rowley, and we received the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 97. 98. Or, uh, 98. Yeah, you were inducted in 98. 98. So once you receive that, it's, you're pretty, pretty much over, like whether it's baseball or football, you know? And then we hit Supernatural, which is like winning Wimbledon and winning the World Cup and winning like the, the, the Super Bowl. Yeah. All in one. You know, and, and so, so for me, it was all about the energy and I, I became very, very obedient to uh, an inner voice that, I know that when I say a lot of people roll their eyes, but see this inner voice have been very vocal since I was a child. Mm -hmm. You know, and that inner voice says, says to me, tell your mom when we're in Tijuana, in, 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 the, in the poorest part of Tijuana, tell your mom, one day I'm going to get you your own house and, and, and a dishwasher and a dryer and, and a refrigerator. That's nice, mijo. No, no, I'm, you know. So you have to be able to understand that this voice set it all up with Clyde Davis and everybody that was around him. He said very clearly, he says, you know, I, I, I just saw you last month at the Radio Music Hall in, in New York, and man, you, you tear it up live. He says, that's a different ring, though. Radio is a different thing. I want to I wanna, I wanna work with you, man. I want to share with you stuff. He says, and we go 50-50. You bring seven songs, I'll bring seven songs. But what I want to know is the last time you bailed out on me because you didn't want to do anything radio and you went Caravan Sarai and you know, so I'm like still thinking about that. To go back to radio, Carlos, it requires like a boxer, serious commitment and discipline. Like, what? It, it, you know, are you committed with discipline, man, to, to come to the studio and, and I said, yeah, I don't get lower. I don't get, you know, I, I don't miss anything, man. I'm, you know, before I didn't want to go that way because it was more important for me to go to Alice Coltrane and, and Herbie Hancock and Wayne Shorter and Pharaoh Sanders. And I didn't want to go that way. This way now, it's not that way anymore. Now it's yeah. this way, you know? And so it was Clive Davis who, who made me uh, an invitation. Not a proposition, but an invitation. You know, let's do it together. And... Uh, I'm going to bring, I'm going to start getting on the phone, calling Lauren Hill and Dave Matthews and this and that, you know. And everybody said, yeah. To tell you the truth, the last song was smooth. And we were like, we got enough songs. He goes, no, man, this is the one. Where'd you hear this one? And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, man, it's ready. We're ready to put it out. But, but it, it came in, the last song, and, and it was still very embryonic. It, it was, you couldn't tell whether it was, a boy or a girl, it was heads or tails, it was just, you know. So I said, well, why don't we go to the studio? Because the, the demo that they sent me was, was okay, you know. It, 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 why don't we go to the studio and cut it at the same time? So he came by, and we all got together in the studio, made our positions next to the microphone. One take. Give me your heart, make it real. Let's forget about it. In fact, the majority, if not the whole album, it's a one take. That's, what's, that's why it's called Supernatural, because I don't remember saying two takes, you know, and, and everything that we did. Even with John Lee Hooker, you know, I said, hey, John, you want to do another one? He goes, B -b 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 what for? <laughs> you know, I said, okay, you know. And, and I heard that Bob Dylan records the same way. He always likes to settle for the first one, you know, so, you know, I'm very, very grateful. Every person is born with an inner and outer support system. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're more than anxious and willing with enthusiasm to open doors for you. I mean, like, Bill Graham opened the, the door, you know, he opened Woodstock and that was it. You know, after that, you know, then, of course, Clyde Davis o o opened it up all the way with Supernatural. But, you know, I, I just, I, I like re reaffirming to artists working it out in the garage right now, man. Don't, don't worry about the support system. It's going to come. In fact, it's already there. They're waiting for you to get your own fingerprints together. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has their own identity, individuality, and uniqueness. So don't, don't use so many pedals because then you're going to lose that immediately. 
Just plug into the damn amplifier and trust that you are the sound. Let's go back to the very beginning. What was it for you growing up? Whether it was a song that you heard, something you heard on the radio, a concert, a musician that kicked open the door to your mind and made you want to pursue music. Do you remember? Yeah, it was my dad. My, okay. Watching my dad play the violin and, and seeing how, you know, uh, uh, this incredible musician, Dave Holland, who played with Miles Davis, he just gave me this compliment about a year and a half ago. He says, you know, Carlos, since I first saw you in Tanglewood in 1970, you always have brought a commonality with all people, like Michael Jackson or, or, uh, or Bob Marley. Everybody, everybody. Grandma, grandpa, the little kids, they all, you know, it, it, Palestine, Hebrews, well, you know, it, it, you know it, Russia, <laughs> everybody, you know. There's a, and that's important to, to, to bring to the table, man. Bring that sound, sound resonance vibration of commonality, because that's what makes people remember their own song forgotten, their own forgotten song that they have inside. What are you do when you gain the world? Two things that I, uh, uh, today, you know, that is important for me to share because whatever you do here goes over there and, and on stage, you know? And what's important for people to be crystallized, clear about their existence is this. You, this is the planet of free will, so you can even doubt God if you want to, even though he's everywhere, you know? However, when you do invite the Holy Ghost to help you make decisions, make you, uh, make uh, no judgments, just make decisions, uh, confer and defer to a Holy Ghost, and it's ever so near, believe me, I, I'm a testament of like, it happens in abundance. Like my day don't start at all, man. No matter what I do, whether I drink coffee or brush my teeth or take a cold shower, the day don't start until I say, thank you, God. That's when it starts for me. And I go, because I feel energy in my body going, oh, he, he deferred to God instead of me, the ego, being in control. Because the ego is very, very controlling, domineering, and all of it has to do with fear. Mm -hmm. C conferring with the Holy Ghost, it means that this is, this is my favorite one, check it out. When you have trust, you get thrust, velocity, and traction. That energy. And when, you don't, when you don't trust nobody, you're crawling. You know, but as soon as you trust the Holy Ghost, you know, things are happening all of a sudden, you know, this, this, the phone rings and it's like 10 people wanting to know if you want to play in their album and stuff, and like, okay, you know, with a body, <laughs> body guy or you know, or, or Eric Clapton. It's more than just notes on paper. I love inviting new musicians to, even if you're an atheist, even if you're an atheist, you know, and grab a hold of that and, 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 uh, and bring it closer to you. Because if, even if you're an atheist, which is not a bad thing for me, you know, it just means, yeah. that, it just means that you choose to sing that song I did it my no, way. <laughs> I did it my way. <laughs> or Celine Dion song, all by myself. No. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a jokester, man. Can you feel? Now I read somewhere that you were very influenced by Richie Valens, which was really impressive to me because when I saw the film La Bamba as a child, it made me want to learn more about the history of rock and roll. Yeah. Well, you know, Richie Valens. I think he just got out of high school. Uh, or he was still in high school when he when he went on the road with Buddy Holly, you know, and uh, they call him Little Richie because he loved Little Richard, you know. So Jimi Hendrix, everybody, we all want to go through Little Richard. He was the gateway to rock and roll. Uh, Little Richard, uh, Bob, Bob Dylan, they all claim that they wanted to either sound or have charisma mm -hmm. or make an impact because Little Richard, before the Beatles, and before anybody, and it was three guys, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, and Bo Diddley. Then you can have the other stuff, which was Pat Boone and whatever, you know, but that, that was polite, whatever. <laughs> this is the real deal that is still, because of all of that, came Led Zeppelin, the because Beatles, little, little, little Richard, I mean, Little Richie Balance with, come on, come on, let's go. You know, it's got the beginning of like, don, 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 which is Carlos Alhambra, you know? Because you can trace things to, you know, the shadows and Richie Balance. When the guitar started to sound a, a little bit more 
ordinary, mean. You know, yeah. it wasn't, you know, e even this cat uh, who's still alive is an incredible guitar player. He played with, with uh, uh, R Ricky, Ricky Nelson, played with, Lich, with Elvis Presley, uh, Burton, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, what is his name? Oh. James Burton. Yeah, that's a hell of a guitar player. But he didn't play gnarly and, and funky like Lonnie Mack. You know, I mean, it takes other guys to become a little bit more, I'll just say it, treacherous. <laughs> you know, they play like some treacherous that. notes, you know. Yeah. But divine, there is such a thing as divine treacherous, you know. And, and so then, then you go all the way to Jeff Beck and Sonny Chirac and, you know, and guys who, who play the guitar like now is uh, Tom Morello, you know. But all of it comes from, from, uh, from America, from yeah. you know, guitar players. This is why I have, uh, this, I have this thing with people invading us, the British invasion. You can't invade me with my own <laughs> shit. <laughs> I love that. You need to go yeah. back and come back with your own shit. You can't come over here with Roll Over Beethoven and Twist and Shout and ah, Well, because Paul McCartney has even said, well, many times, that his biggest influence was Buddy Holly and Little Richard. So don't come here invading me. You know, British ambition, no, 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 and no, Keith go back. Richards, come back you know? when you have like Michelle Marbell, and even that comes from Bob Dylan. Uh, so Bob Dylan played in uh, Royal Arbor Hall, and the Beatles just like, holy <laughs> shit. Next time all they did was like Robert, Robert Soul. Soul. Yep. So you know, yay, man, yeah. so we know history. Oh yeah, we know history. Hey, leave us a comment about Carlos Santana and his amazing music. What's a, a, a compelling interview? He's so great. What are your memories of Black Magic Woman and Smooth and his guitar playing? What are your top Santana albums and songs? Let us know in the comments. If you dig our content, we do invite you to subscribe below. We'd love to have you. Until next time, three chords and the truth. Maker.